Okay, on to the keen butterfly carburetor that everybody hates and talks crap about on uh, these old Harleys. Are they the greatest? No. Do they perform well? They can. Um, if you're looking for a performance-oriented setup, not the best. Get a Makuni. Um, reliability, fuel mileage, all that. Get a CV. Um, that's my thought. However, carbs are carbs, and I like working on them. So. These old butterflies, there's a couple different variations. There's some with different style accelerator pumps. This one is set up, uh, I drilled a hole in the accelerator pump passage, bypassed all the squirt gas back in to the carb, all that emissions crap, and uh, set it up for hot rodding. So here's how, how we go through that. Um, I did replace all of the bull screws with Allen's just because it's easier to work on, less likely to strip out. So I'm going to leave the accelerator pump in for now, but we'll pop this bowl off. Uh, being that these are Japanese carbs, uh, metric on the screws. What are these, 5 mil, 3 mil, something? I don't remember. 4 mil. But you got four float bowl screws, just like everything. I feel like I'm doing carb videos all the time. But old crap, this is usually the first sign of your issues in the carburetor. Like I said, I just rode this bike to the shop, so I know it's running okay. Um, did pick up a slight little hesitation, though. Um, I'm not running a fuel filter on it, so that seems like a likely culprit. If this doesn't fix it, then I'll go through and clean up the points and condenser. I've had really bad luck with condensers lately. Um, just crappy, cheap repop parts that don't seem to work ever. Um, you got one screw on the accelerator pump that actually goes through is the float bowl body. So that's the one I'm taking out right now, this top corner one, depending on how your carb is sitting. But there we go, have it. Everything looks pretty clean in here still. A little, little gummed up, not too bad, but we'll go through, clean that up. Um, I am going to pop the accelerator pump off of this too. Um, you got your little block off rubber section for your idle jet. Uh, make sure you have this. If your bike's running like crap and you don't have one of these in there, that could explain part of that. Oh, then do I have a flathead small enough to fit in the idle passage? Of course not. Um, I got a 160 main in here. I spent a ton of time going through and dialing this carb in, um, being that it was all factory. So let me grab a small screwdriver for that jet. Okay. Main jet looks clear. Those usually don't get gummed up. It's the idle passage that tends to get... Whew. I've had bad luck with some of these on the idle jets. A lot of times you'll strip the brass out and then end up having to drill them, which is kind of a huge pain in the ass. Here's the idle jet. What do I have on here? I can't even see. Sixty-eight. Sixty-eight on the pilot. And what I like to do when you have these idle jets out, if you hold them up to the light, kind of look through them, make sure you can see. And this one you can, but there's actually a little bit of crap in there. So I'm glad I did this. Just spraying out these passages real quick. If you cover both sides, it should spray out through the sides of the passage. Because on these butterflies, they uh, do a lot of crossing over. Um, try and show you some of that. Basically, there's a bunch of holes in the side of this passage that cross over from the idle circuit into the main. Um, so you want to make sure everything's really clean in here. So we'll blow through all of these real quick. Try to soak the camera. Make sure you got fuel coming in at the top up here too, like it is on the butterfly that I'm not holding in front of the camera. So if I spray through this idle passage, you're going to see fuel spray across this butterfly, like so. That's what you want. Same thing on the main. Wear safety glasses. 
or blast yourself in the eye like I do every single time I work on a carp. Um, and then that crossover passage comes through here. I just want to make sure I'm getting fuel into the main circuit, which I am. So we're good there. Um, carb is blown out and everything is flowing proper. If you want, go through your air, air feeds as well. This crosses over into your main circuit. This one should cross over into the idle circuit, which it does. And there's that. Um, so the body of the carb is good. Jets are much cleaner if I look at this pilot through the light. The hole looks substantially bigger now, so that's good. A little crap in there. I really should put a fuel filter on that bike, but I haven't done it yet. Still got the original factory uh, hose clamp on the, uh, what do you call it? On the tank, on the petcock. All right, so the body of the carb's done. Don't forget your little rubber stopper for your idle circuit. So that's good. Now, since we have this apart already, if I push down on this, it should give me a little bit of fuel. I should still have some gas in there. What do I got? Filler rod, that'll work. Nice, strong stream out of the accelerator pump like it's supposed to. But I thought this is where it was leaking from. If you rattle this, that, this is the check ball conversion that I kind of did. Um, I mixed up a couple of these keen butterflies. I probably got eight of them. Um, I took the older style with the check valve in here and ran that instead because that bypasses the, uh, in the emissions eras when they started leaning out these carbs and trying to get them to be more fuel compliant with the uh, emissions. Basically what they did is took your accelerator pump and diverted some of the flow instead of squirting gas right through the accelerator pump passage into the uh, bore of the carb. So instead of going straight into the motor, it would give you about a third, half to a third shot of uh, fuel. So here's the check ball I was talking about. Um, it would give you about a third of the shot and it would divert half the gas half to a third of the gas back into the fuel bowl so you're not dumping as much gas into the motor. Um, good for the planet, not good for going fast. So, like I said, I mean, this being a stocker, it's not really going to be a crazy, crazy fast one. It's not stroked, it doesn't have anything crazy done to the motor, just a little bit of head porting and a lot of time spent on actual carb tuning. So. Don't be one of the people that just shrugs off, oh, it's a butterfly, it's a piece of crap. Yes, it's not the greatest carb in the world. It is kind of a piece of crap. But if you're on a budget and that's what you got, you can make them work. just takes a lot, a little bit of time and a good amount of knowledge. Look on the internet. There's tons and tons and tons of detailed, in-depth videos on how to set these up as best as possible. Um, again, if I was building my own bike from scratch, and needed to get something that would work, I typically run CV carbs on everything. Um, it tends to do a lot better in various scenarios. If I was building a hot rod, I would go with Cooney. All those old mopeds and pedal start uh, two strokes, doing all those and dirt bikes and stuff. Um, McCoonies are still probably my favorite of the carburetors and I've run a lot of different ones. Um, these butterflies, not at all my favorite, but a carb is a carb. Should be able to make it work regardless. Um, the only other thing I want to do on this is just blow through the fuel inlet passage, try and clear out around the needle. Just gonna pop this off real quick. Uh, you got one set screw that holds the float in on this style carb. Don't even have to take it all the way out, just loosen it up enough so you can get this past it. Let me wipe down this needle real quick while I'm in here. Might as well do a full carb clean. So here's your needle. 
tip on this is still pretty good. So that's cleaned up. We'll drop this back on the float. Put the pin back in. Just like that. Snug it down. And this is actually nice because on these you can blow through that fuel inlet if you don't mind tasting like gasoline uh, blow through this inlet with the car but upside down hopefully you guys can hear it air flows through little pressure on the float air stops other way to do it is to flip it upside down you can hear that air change hopefully but that's that um, now we are ready to reassemble Quick and easy. Some people get nervous with carburetors because of all the small parts and things like that, but it's really not that big of a deal. Just pay attention or make YouTube videos while you're doing it and then you can go back and watch whatever you forgot. The four bolts go back in. We can start putting the rest of this bike together and hopefully it runs like a top again. Now would be a perfect time to add a fuel filter, but me being me won't do it and probably run into the same problem all over again. This bike is up for sale if anybody's interested. I'll have that brake light switched hopefully later today. I'm going to run by the shop after I get it back together. Um, it's a good bike, a very good bike. Um, it's getting harder and harder to find original ones. I know it's a Sportster and nobody cares about them, but this one is built well. Um, like I said, I had uh, that Iron he or Evo chopper we're working on right now for Justice that works for us. He uh, broke his Honda, and I pretty much gave him that bike on loan. And he's not a motorcycle guy, not a mechanic, doesn't really know how much to work or how much how to work on them very well. But he rode that bike for about a month and a half, two months, without any issues. Um, mechanically sound, good running, all original Ironhead. It's had its repairs, but it's fine. It's still original. Much rather have factory parts than mismatched things thrown together. So, um, carb is done. I'm going to get this back on the bike.